Welcome, everybody. The moment you have all been waiting for. We are here with Victory Road for the final of the Victory Road paired with GG Tour Series 12 Challenge. I myself am Cross AK Quality, and we've got Mr. Jamie Boyd joining us once again on our side. We've got Paul versus Jesus. How are we feeling? It's going to be an interesting matchup here. We've got Zashin Kyoga versus Zashin Palkia. Uh, you would normally, just hearing those restricted pairs, tend to favor the matchup for the Palkia, uh, but Paul does have access to a couple of Pokemon that does give it a run for its money, basically. The Forothorn is the Pokemon that I'm looking at uh, mainly. That is a very strong Pokemon to be going up against Jesus's team. Uh, so it is going to be a game of playing around that Pokemon uh, for sure, but uh, no surprise to see how uh, these restricted pairs uh, going into the final. Uh, Zashin Palkia and Zashin Kyoga were probably two of the, po the po restricted pairs that you would have expected uh, yep. to do well in these uh, these tournaments, and they certainly have done that. Well, exactly that, and I can't say there's a standout Pokemon I really didn't expect to see in the finals, because even their partners in crime with the team compositions that they have, they're not that far out. Sure, we do have Paul actually having two grass types. We've got Whimsicott and the Ferrothorn, but um, there's nothing too outstandish from it. And of course, we do have the team preview, ladies and gents, for game one. We are going to be seeing it from Paul Ruiz's um, point of view, rocking the Zacian, Whimsicott, Incineroar, Kyogre, Zapdos, Cantonian, and the Ferrothorn versus Jesus's Palkia, Zacian, uh, Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, Thunderous Incarnate, and that Amoongus. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see just something like a Dynamax uh, uh, Palkia straight away. Uh, you can support it very well with the Grimstar and Cinderella, and Amoongus can keep it somewhat safe from the opposing Zashian as well. Uh, but you do need to be very careful of that Ferrothorn. The Zashian on uh, Jesus' side of the field does not carry a Fighting-type attack. It has opted for Behemoth Blade, Play Rough, and Substitute as its uh, moves of choice alongside the Protect. So it really can't deal with the Ferrothorn at all. Uh, there's a little bit of a saving grace in the fact that the Ferrothorn is not carrying Leech Seed. It's still carrying Body Press and Iron Defense, but it's opted for Power Whip over Leech Seed, probably to give a slightly better Kyogre matchup, uh, but that could be um, crucial for the Frothorn uh, being able to be taken care of in this game, because it won't be able to get huge amounts of recovery. Uh, Palkia will still be able to absolutely chunk the Frothorn, even though it won't be doing super effective damage. It will still be able to do a very nice chunk, especially if it sets up the rain first to be able to just hit it on that specially defensive side. Uh, so there's a couple of, uh, I was going to say tech choices, but lack of tech choices, I should say, the fighting type attacks on the Zashian that makes it weaker against the Frothorn, but no Leech Seed on the Frothorn makes it slightly weaker as well. Uh, so it is going to be a little bit awkward in that regard. And we are seeing the Palkia come out immediately oh. for Jesus' side of the field, paired up with that Grimstar, alongside the Whimscott and the Kyogre on Paul's side. Talk about awkward, you do not want to run into a Palkia if you're leading with a Kyogre. Uh, but, however, we do have the Whimsicott on Paul's side of the field uh, versus the Grimmsnarl, the fairy type, being escorted from that water type on the side, on Jesus's side. Uh, Jesus does have access um, to a couple of tricks up their sleeve with the Grimmsnarl. Of course, that Grimmsnarl is not prone to uh, the pranks, the taunt of that Whimsicott, as it does seem like we're going to be getting a Dynamax straight off the bat in turn one of game one of the final, ladies and gents, and it is none other than Palkia going for that monstrous, monstrous Dynamax form to just go ahead and just dish out huge amounts of damage. We see Whimsicott, though, opting to go for the helping hand onto the Kyogre. What will the Grimmsnarl do? Just goes for the light screen. It does set up that additional layer of bulk, which essentially um, nullifies that helping hand, and as a result, the Grimmsnarl gets it's a critical hit knocked out immediately. I'm not sure if the critical hit did matter, as the helping hand may have deterred um, the differential between um, whether the light screen was set up or not, but Max Quake is coming out from the Palkia, goes into the Kyogre slot, does deal huge amounts of damage whilst boosting its special defense. So, the very, very high octane start to this best of three set, Jamie. Yeah, it's very interesting to see the Kyogre outspeed the Palkia as well. With the Life Orb variants on Palkia, you tend to run it very fast, and Kyogre is still outspeeding that, so it's not going to be uh, boosting up the nature of the, the Palkia at all, uh, but maybe the, the Kyogre is run as fast as it possibly can be. You don't always need to run that, especially if you're running Tailwinds. Uh, usually if you're running max speed on the Kyogre, it's because you've got a plus one boost somewhere, but then you do have that with the, Kyogre, the Zapdos that is waiting in the back for Paul, so if you can get that plus one boost on the 
the Kyogre, you do get to outspeed uh, a lot of Pokemon, uh, like the Zashin and the Calyrex, that you wouldn't be able to do without that boosting nature. So uh, that coming into play here really nicely, being able to hit that Water Spout into the Grimmsnarl before the Max Quake came off. Uh, with the Max Quake and the reduction of uh, HP as well, the Water Spout would have done very, very little damage to the Grimmsnarl, but yeah. instead outspeeding and KOing it immediately. Yeah, exactly that is. We're going to be seeing the Protect coming out from the Kyogre here. More pa more of a passive positional situation. Um, play from Paul's side, setting up that Tailwind. We do see the Kyogre, of course, able to protect itself from that Zacian's attack. Max Quake are now actually going into the Whimsicott slot, so it could go ahead and break that Focus Ash, whilst further boosting both its own as well as Zacian's special defense. So it is now a plus two of its special defense. Zacian is at plus one, and when when you're up against the Paul's kind of team, you do want to try to absorb and sponge all of this damage as much as possible and then retaliate with the damage from your side. Yeah, you definitely want to be able to. And you should be able to do some reasonable damage with the uh, uh, Origin Pulse still with the Kyogre. The special defense boosts are definitely going to help out a significant amount, but there's only one more turn of max available from the Kyogre. And it's not done to, uh, from the Palkia, sorry, and it's not done too much damage to the opposing side of the field. Um, oh. Whimsicott is going to help out the Kyogre again. It will still be able to do a massive chunk of damage, but not to this Ashen that is going for Protect. Oh, yeah, trying to assist its uh, partner there. Water Spout is only going to be uh, landing onto this Palkia, which at times for resistance in Dynamax <laughs> it is not even going to drop a sweat. Um, as we're going to be seeing the Max Wormwind more than enough stab boosted to go ahead and absolutely wail on Kyoda, knocking itself, uh, knocking it out of this game one and uh, adding that bit more of momentum that you can, even though Paul's got Tailwind set up, the turns are starting to tick down and they're starting to expire. If you, if you go into the Zapdos though, you can just start airstreaming, then you won't need to worry about any Tailwinds in the future. If you just get one speed boost, then you'll be out speeding for the rest of the game at this point. Uh, but while you've got the Tailwind up, you can make use of your Zashin, just still being able to outspeed both of the Pokemon here. The Dynamax has been used up on the Palkia at this point. It will absolutely be KO'd to any player rush that the Zashin on Paul's side uh, wants to go for here into the opposing uh, Palkia. And Behemoth Blade, if with a helping hand boost, will be able to KO the opposing Zashin. It did just go for a Protector as well so that could still be an option and then just be able to take care of the Palkia uh, with the Dynamax Zapdos that is waiting in the back as we did see uh, the little sneak peek off so really the Zashian on Paul's side has its choice of a KO here if you just go for play rough into the Palkia that's a KO if you go for helping hand behemoth blade that will be a KO into the Zashian as well uh, if you go for the play rough into the Palkia you are risking a potential protect that could come out if you go for the Zashin it's a guaranteed hit unless they want to go for a double protect and that would open your Zashin up to a rain boosted hydro pump which should be able to pick up the knockouts but that's still a much more guaranteed and I guess safer hit into mm -hmm. the Zashin because that should be picking up a knockout on e any Pokemon that would switch in as well for the opposing Zashin as it is opting to switch out here uh, into the Incineroar so actually Incineroar will be able to take a behemoth blade very comfortably yeah, makes a lot of sense uh, bringing in that Incineroar, getting the Intimidate onto the Zacian, uh, being able to go ahead and bring it back down to neutral of its stages. But guess what? Wimscott has other plans on its mind. It goes and gives it a helping hand once again onto that Zacian as if it were still with a plus one attack uh, boost there, but it is still into that Incineroar slot, even though, my lord, that's not exactly chip damage. That's nearly a two-hit KO as Pal Palkia is going to go for the high Hydro Pump, it connects into the Zacian in the rain. Oh, oh my lord, Zacian somehow survives on 5 HP. Yeah, that's a very impressive survival from the from the Zashian there. I would have expected the rain boost to be enough to, uh, along with the life orb as well, to be able to pick up the knockout on the Zashian, but yeah, very well trained Zashian there. Is in range of a fake out from the Incineroar, and the Whimsicott should still be in range of a uh, rain boosted Hydro Pump, so you could potentially get a double knockout here. Uh, you've almost certainly got to protect your Zashian to keep it safe from the fake outs that could come out from the Incineroar, and if the Whimsicott goes down, then you just get to get the paid switch into your Zapdos and start going for play rough into the Palkia and Airstream into the and that'd also be a double KO. So a very, very clutch survival for the Zashian. If you're down to just your Zapdos at the end, it could be a little bit dicey. It would still have all turns of Dynamax available, uh, mm -hmm. but then you'd have lost your, the huge amount of damage that could come out from the from the Zashian, and Paul is not going to lose the Zashian this turn to any fake outs. It is going to be protecting itself. 
Yep, uh, as we're going to be seeing the Wimstrap now go for the Moonblast, of course, not dealing that much damage after all of those Max Quake boosts there. Hydro Pump actually targets the Whimsicott there, completely ignores that Zacian, and will, as a result, pick up a KO there. It is still in the rain. It is still life or booster. Do not um, underestimate this Palkia's damage output, as uh, the Zacian uh, does show, of course, uh, the Protect in, uh, against Incineroar's uh, attack there. Tailwind is out as well as Rain. Yeah, it was, it was nice predicting the protect the possession by going for the parting shot, but you kind of need to not go for Hydro Pump into the Whimsicott if you are going for parting shot, or even a self-parting shot uh, into your own Palkia so that you get that switch out. If you're predicting the protect, which Seisus did very nicely, uh, you can't KO the Whimsicott as we just saw. You den then don't get the parting shot to switch out. If you do get that to leave the Whimsicott on the field with the Zashin still alive, you don't get the switch into the Zapdos that can now just go for Airstream into the Incineroar. That should be enough to pick up the knockout easily with the Life Orb that it is carrying as well. You get to go for play rough into the opposing Palkia. It's definitely low enough at this point uh, that even though there's been Intimidates from the Incineroar, it should be easily be able to knock out the Palkia. And even a Zashian that would be just hard switching in for the Airstream uh, for the Incineroar as well, it would still, still take a huge amount of damage. Uh, you may want to switch out the Palkia instead so that it's going to take a play rough with the Zashian instead, but then you're still almost certainly losing your Incineroar to any kind of Airstream that would come out. So uh, yeah, very nice going for passing shot, but it kind of needed to be into into his own Palkia there. Yeah, I would actually agree with that. I feel in this situation, um, as it's unfolded, Paul's just got the momentum now with their own Dynamax, as they've been holding off on using it up until the most opportune moment, as which has presented itself right now. Dynamax Zapdos is on the field. It is here to wreak havoc and to go ahead and try to get that game one win for Paul. So we're just going to have to see what moves have been slotted in. Sacred Sword comes out First from the Zashian, picks up the KO onto the Incineroar. It is out of game one, and it is going to be followed, potentially, uh, by this Palkia with the Max Airstream, but no, thanks to the Max Quake boost previously attained from its own Dynamax, it's able to survive. As a Life Orb, uh, recoil damage has been chipped off of this Zapdos, and Palkia is just going for the Earth Power. It goes for the Earth Power, does finally uh, get rid of the final five hit points points that this Zashian did still somehow have. Could potentially be a little bit of a, a misplay there from Paul. You, I can see what he's going for, not trying to trying to avoid the 90% accuracy of the play rough. Because if you do go for just airstream into Incineroar and play rough into the Palkia, that's a double KO for sure if play rough connects. Uh, but opting for just Sacred Sword and airstream, maybe forgetting about the Quake boost that had were on the Palkia, uh, it has allowed it to be able to survive this. It's going to be close if the Zashian would be able to survive a uh, Max Flare because it's life or boosted as well. But then if it does survive, then that means that you get to go for Behemoth Blade into the Zapdos and a Spatial Rend as a last-ditch effort yeah. from the opposing Palkia as well. And that combination, it might be enough to pick up the knockout on the Zapdos because it's not a very bulky one. It's the offensive one with the Life Orb. It's going to take another round of Life Orb chip as well. So it's going to be very close. It would, I think it's going to come down to maybe whether the Zashin is able to survive this Max Flare that could come out. Definitely go for Spatial Rends with the Palkia because you can't go for Hydro Pump in the Sun. That wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, so you've got to go for Spatial end, even though it's slightly weaker, and that will avoid any potential sun reducing the hydro pumps. But here comes the max flare. Is it strong enough to be able to KO the Sashian? Here we go. No protects and no, it cannot pick up the Zashian there. It may still be the case where there, um, I, I feel like there may have been a light screen still available on Jesus' side, but correct me if I'm wrong, as we are going to be seeing the Behemoth Blade coming out from Zashian, goes into, of course, the Zapdos slot. Dynamax Zapdos deals so much damage. Is there any static is the question? No, there isn't. Ooh. There is a follow-up of Spatial Rend. And yeah, there it is. We've got the game one winner, which is Jesus going ahead and out trumping um, that Dynamax Zapdos there that was really trying to bring it back and I think I completely agree with what you mentioned just now uh, which may have been a bit of a misstep from Paul in the previous turn yeah like Making that play must have forgotten about the Quake boosts on the Palkia because that was easily able to shrug off. I say easily, it was probably on one HP when it had that final spatial rent yeah. hit. But yeah, absolutely needs to be the other way around. It needs to be airstream into Incineroar. And if you connect play rough, you win. Like just it's just a straight up 90% ch chance you will win. And opting to try and avoid, like it's absolutely understandable to try and go for a 100% win. Uh, but that was not the way to do it because that Palkia was able to survive. And then the Zashian was just so bulky enough, enough with the with the light screen as well to be able to just take 
Icon, that Max Flare very comfortably, and the combination of Behemoth Blade and Spatial Rem was still strong enough. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a misstep from Paul there. Uh, what's quite surprising not to see the Ferrothorn, it seems like it is fantastic in this matchup. So, uh, very yeah, surprised not to see it, but like Zapdos is again very good in the matchup and the Whimscott was definitely putting in some good work as well and you probably do want your two restricted uh, going into this match but yeah still very surprised not to see the Faroth on there because it's, it does pair up very nicely maybe the fact that it doesn't carry leech sheets because if it did it's just effectively an immediate win uh, for uh, Paul's side of the fields because there's almost nothing that can break through the Faroth if it gets a, 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 but an iron defense up uh, but yeah like Maybe because it's not going to have Leech Seed and it's a little bit slower, just leftovers is recovery, opting not to bring that. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's still a very good bring into this match. Uh, it, and Paul definitely had the pieces as well to be able to, to win that match. If it was just the other way around and play rough into Valkyrie, yeah. then uh, they would have been sorted. So they don't need to bring that for Othorn. It's still very viable going into the match, but they don't need to bring it. The Zapdos would have been perfectly content uh, to take that game one if it was just the other way around. Well, yeah, exactly that. Obviously, there was still a potential chance of RNG being, um, you know, like uh, a, a part of uh, what that turn could have been. Maybe that wasn't a completely guarantee with the play rough, but it was still worth the risk. Like you mentioned, Jamie, you still uh, needed to try to check that slot, even if there was a, you know, a point percent chance that you didn't miss that play rough. So it was quite unfortunate. And, uh, you know, the result could have completely been overturned for that game one. But nevertheless, we are here. We are now in in game two and we have also got a disconnection unfortunately <laughs> how well or should i say badly timed uh, to that hype well, I don't know. At, at, at least at least that's the time to disconnect in, rather than just being in the game so um yes. we'll have to see what the what the ruling there is is going to be i'm not sure when the um, disconnect uh, ending up being a loss comes into play uh, because the game has which had the game technically started there, I'm not too sure about that. I think so, it did. I uh, think it like, did. The moment that yeah, it, you like, left, from, you know, you know what it is. Like the moment that you left um, the team preview, I think that may be. But obviously, given it's a final, I'm not sure what the procedure is and all that. We're going to try to get informed yeah. as well about that. Yeah, there, there, there has like there has to be a cutoff at some point. Like the game has started and you disconnected. So um, does that does that equate to the leads of like if you've I think if you if you've seen the opposing Pokemon, if the leads have been yeah. shown, that's information that is now into that game. So I reckon mm -hmm. that that would be the cutoff. Pro I, I would argue that that was probably a little bit before when a game would have considered to be started. So I think it's reasonable to just uh, assume that we can just replay that one uh, because yeah. that no information was revealed in that game too. And of course, this is the final. It would be very anticlimactic uh, to have a game loss just for a uh, disconnection that did end up happening, unfortunately. And that yeah. is going to happen occasionally, but we've had to play online tournaments for quite a while at this point. That does unfortunately come with side effects like disconnects uh, that can happen uh, because internet is not perfect perfect unfortunately uh, but that is something we have to deal with but at least if it is going to disconnect that's pretty much as, assuming we are just going to ignore that and go into the game two again that is the best time to disconnect like because any yeah. later and that would probably result in a loss yeah and i agree i think we are also being told now as well that that is definitely the case there were no pokemon that were revealed so we are just going to go ahead and repeat the game as no leads were presented at least visually from our side um and i think that would have been the case for both sides wouldn't it because it was, just a, so. it was just a straight disconnection that just yeah, I mean, I've, I've never seen a disconnection happen at that point so i'm unsure Same. if the if the opposing player um it would have gone through and and shown the leads but i would assume not and uh, we're yeah. going into this next game anyway so uh yeah it, it I, I i would assume that we're safe to assume this is going to be a game two still uh because there, there was no information shown yeah all, all it ends up resulting in is a bit more thinking time for both players and they do technically have an opportunity to have re re rethought their um four pokemon they are bringing to the match they could opt to go for different things that they had extra time to think and maybe thought oh no th this pokemon would be slightly better Better. Uh, yeah. So we'll have to see if that's the. Well, we will never know if that's the case. So it doesn't particularly <laughs> matter because we got the disconnection at the previous screen. But this is the point where the game has now started. Oh. So we will go into this game too once again with the Grim Snarl and the Palkia coming out for Jesus again. And the Zashian instead of the Kyogre this time paired up oh. with that Windsor Cop for Paul. 
All right, so um, as we've previously seen, we know that this Grim Snarl, of course, has access to both screens, so it can set up a reflector, but we also know that the Whimsicott has access to Helping Hand, so I'm not sure if there could be any sort of cheeky play that Jesus is expecting or anticipating with a Helping Hand play rough into Palkia, if that makes sense or not, but you have to be wary of the Thunder Wave and any sort of Dynamax that Palkia may even go for turn one. And you've got to worry about the potential Incineroar switch in as well. You don't need to Dynamax your Palkia straight away. It is entirely reasonable to uh, stall out that Dynamax or put off the Dynamax, I should say, uh, so that you can make use of it in the future turns. Because uh, a lot of players do opt to just go for the immediate Dynamax turn one, and that doesn't have to be the strategy. You can indeed, like we are seeing, switch out the Palkia, almost only for the Incineroar. Yeah, there it is. Get the Intimidate down onto the Zashin. Makes sense to switch in the Incineroar when you're facing down the Zashin and not the Kyogre yet. And yeah, that, that's, a, that's a definitely a very strong switch in for Jesus. They're not committing to the Dynamax straight away, especially because the Zashin went for a Protect this turn. Well, exactly that, and you don't even know if the Thunder Wave is going to come out, which, yes, Paul did anticipate that being the case, which is why they wanted to go Protect the Zashin, go for Moonblast into what was the Palkia slot, which is now the Incineral. It would have been preferable if that Moonblast did actually connect with the Grim Snarl, but of course, uh, Paul was just trying to play a bit more safer rather than go for any heavy reads. Yeah, and so, like that's that's a pretty reasonable turn one from both players. You get some chip into the Incineroar uh, that is going to help, and so oh, oh no, oh, oh no, oh my lord. Well, we were in a game there. Uh, oh so my lordy. I wonder. Who, so we will have to find out who's uh, who's. Uh, uh, internet that was so yeah uh, probably going to be jesus's given the fact that paul was still able to input something there I'm not too sure we'll have to see um who's who's was going to be there and what the ruling would be and now that is uh, a lot more awkward some um, what the ruling should be because the game had absolutely started there at this yep. point so yeah that th this is going to have to come down to what the judges would uh, consider for this one whether we can just replay uh, for the final match or do we just still go for disconnect is a loss which is the ruling uh, for uh, for online tournaments so yeah uh, we uh, currently we don't know as the casters uh, who disconnected so there would have been a disconnect from from someone so they did need to yeah. check um so and at least we, we should be able to see from uh paul's side because we are capturing his video uh if mm -hmm. he was still connected if he, if he was then you would assume it was on jesus side of the field and we'd be able to see if it was paul that yeah. disconnected as well so unfortunately again once again the downsides of online tournaments hopefully live tournaments will yeah. come back at some point hopefully the world will be in a state so that we can go back to those uh live tournaments but we have to make do with the online tournaments and all of its wonderful ups and pretty big downs when it comes pretty to big <laughs> i mean pretty big when you just go ahead you have one of the most high finals and all that we're just like oh game two let's get straight into it it's like oh i was like okay don't worry don't worry we'll, we'll, we'll fix it it's all sorted no leads no leads but okay yeah well <laughs> we got we got a bit yeah uh, yeah it's a bit awkward there isn't it <laughs> um, but, absolutely <laughs> but regardless um uh we do know that the judges are looking into it of course ladies and gents um this is quite a dramatic final regardless of whether the <laughs> gameplay is in the game or well, the, ga the, the game one was that was a great it was a fantastic game one like yeah, it, it, it would be great if we can get a fantastic game two and game three as well but if the ruling ends up that uh like well, yeah assuming that it was uh maybe if it was pool's disconnect then the game just mm -hmm. would go to Jesus if it is the ruling that yes. the disconnection would be the loss. And if it was Jesus, that would have mean, at least selfishly for us, we would get a game three because Jesus would have just given a game win to Paul and it would be still 1-1. One, one. But mm -hmm. we will have to see what the ruling is going to be uh, in regards to that because, yeah, the game had absolutely started at that point. Even though it's one turn and it's a very, very repeatable turn, you can yeah. easily just go for switch out, Moonblast and Protect again. Uh, but... We will see what is going to be happening here. Yeah, uh, Palkia is too strong for the internet, ladies and gents. It's just disrupting, you know, uh, oh my God, time, space, all throughout the universe and all that. So, yeah. Um, no, it's not doing time. That's Dialga's job. It's only space. Uh, space time. It's okay. No, it, it's taken on Dialga's job. It's and time. No, Palkia is space, Palkia is space and Dialga is okay, time. Okay, fine. Space, mate. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, of course. Uh, we're just gonna have to wait uh, sit tight everybody we did say get snacks um <laughs> this was also for this occasion too so be well prepped but um yeah we're gonna try to f figure it out i think like jamie mentioned if um it was paul uh that did disconnect this will be going directly to jesus um they he, they will
will be crowned the champion of this tournament. So we are being told there is um, interactions uh, between the judges and the players. They're still talking it out. Um, unfortunate, but it is what it is. We're going to make do with what we can. Um, I just wanted to ask you, so going into that play, right? Um, we've got Palkia switched out in game two, right? Um, it was for Incineroar, the Zacian lost a lot of momentum. Do you feel like the Zacian would have probably been switched out at that point? Because they're already at neutral and, you know, there wasn't much you can do about it in that situation other than be forced to do it. And Incin could go for a parting shot. It turned to. Yeah. Yeah. The, you've got fake out pressure or parting shot or even just immediate flare blitz since the um, Zacian, if you want, Sacred Intimidated probably wouldn't be able to pick up the knockouts uh, on the uh, opposing Incineroar, so it's just a, a good showing that you don't need to Dynamax immediately with the Palkia. A lot of players uh, do lead with their Dynamax Pokemon. It seems to be the strategy, it's an entirely viable strategy uh, most of the time. Uh, we can see Gabriele going for Solgaleo Dynamaxing immediately in their matches that we featured, um, and that is that is a very good strategy as well, but it doesn't have to be every single turn. You don't need to lead with the Dyna Dynamax Pokemon and go for that dynamite straight away. And that's already, you can, like, the, ter the turn worked out very well for Jesus. Now they are in a much stronger position than they would have been if they'd have just gone Thunder Wave Max Quake into the uh, opposing Zashin because it did go for the Protect. Yeah, and um, just to give you an update, everybody, we've just uh, been informed that uh, they will be repeating the turns. So both trainers will be repeating the first turn, I believe. I'm not sure about the second. Was the second in play? Uh, we didn't get to see a second We didn't get turn. a second. It was, it no, was just didn't. Moonblast into Incineroar and a Protect from Zashian. So, yeah. uh, so, like, very easily repeatable, fortunately. Uh, so um, if there's any kind of special attack drop, oh, that would have been a bit more awkward on the Incineroar uh, because you would have to try and repeat that. So maybe if it was carrying Snarl, that would have mattered, but it doesn't, yeah, it does, doesn't come into play too much. At least there is a very easily repeatable turn. Uh, to come out. Just hope for no critical hit on the incinerator this time. Oh, no, don't! Why'd you do it, Jamie? No, no, you just you gave me the we warning. See. We will see. We oh, will see. Oh. Okay, all right, well... No, no, we, we're going we're gonna to get the special attack drop that won't matter. Okay. Uh, universe, don't listen to Jamie, please. Please, anything <laughs> but that. Um, so, yes, we're going to try for the third time after two disconnections for game two. Um, <laughs> both trainers are going to be repeating the same first turn. So, we're just waiting for Jesus. There we go. Uh, they've just gone ahead and inputted their team. And um, fingers crossed, ladies and gents, that we get this game two and we we don't have to unfortunately go with an alternate um decision if there's even further mistakes going on right now but um let's find out let's find out we're gonna see the same leads it is gonna be the dream style and palkia over on uh, jesus's side whilst it is also gonna be the Wimscott and zashian once again on pause so we are talking a bit about the turn two jamie um where incineral did um essentially have pressure with fake out or parting shot uh, zashian had already protected so I think you mentioned that Jesus would have that momentum of a better positioning their Pokemon in anticipation of turn three, correct? Yeah, yeah, they've definitely got a reasonable position. They can go for a Thunder Wave if they want, uh, because the Zashin has gone for a Protect at this point, and the Incineral can go for a Fake Out to just guarantee that, and no Behemoth Blade into the Grimmsnarl, so it can do things uh, in the future turns as well. So it's uh, still, still a pretty reasonable position, so going to get that nice little bit of chip damage onto the Incineral. It shouldn't be in range of Sacred Sword. Uh, if it would have been close combat, it would have almost certainly been in range with this extra chip, uh, but Sacred Sword won't do it, so Incineral should be able to be whatever it wants this turn. You'd have to go for a Moonblast and a and, oh, special attack drop. Oh, no, don't, don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Moonblast, yeah, Moonblast did roughly the same amount of damage, so we're all okay. good here. All right, and, good yeah, it would, ha it would have to be Moonblast and Sacred Sword, or maybe even Helping Hand Sacred Sword, actually, to be fair, uh, to mm. knock out the Incineroar. So it is, oh, it is Helping Hand, so if the Incineroar goes for a fake out, it can stop that, but if it doesn't, it's probably being KO'd here. And it didn't, but Reflect might save it. Here we go, ladies and gents. There is more action from this game too, apparently. Sacred Sword um, uh, will just miss from picking up that KO. It will proc that berry on the Incineroar, that being, of course, that Figgy Berry, recovering HP, but there's no Flare Blitz. There's just a parting shot, which makes a lot of sense. The Zashian is at minus one of its attack right now, and Jesus, all of a sudden, does have that free pivot going. They are going to be able to, more than likely, potentially even bring Bring that Palkia back in right now. Maybe get some Thunder Wave shenanigans going. But no, they actually have opted to go for the Zashian of their own. 
Yeah, this is a pretty reasonable switch in for the, the Zashin at this point. Uh, if you, even if you get the Thunder Wave down onto the, the opposing Zashin, you do risk play rush that can happen into the Grims, uh, into the Palkia that would switch in. Um, Zashin is not going to care too much about the opposing Whims card at this point. You can still start to stall out, as not quite stall out turns, but still put off your Dynamax uh, to be able to match the Dynamax of the Zapdos. If Palkia matches the Dynamax of the Zapdos, uh, that would be much more beneficial for, um, for Jesus rather than just using up immediately the Dynamax. Uh, but we're still going to get some some huge damage especially with another helping hand coming out oh as light screen is going to be set up now from Jesus's side as uh, Zashian just goes for that behemoth blade from Paul's side of the field will be targeting the Zashian on the opponent's side as well so not even being able to guarantee that two hit KO um testament to why reflect and light screens in general are really good on Grimmsnarl as the Zashian is very free to go for that substitute setup yeah, and so that's a pretty free substitute at that point. The Behemoth Blade not doing too much damage there at all. Based on the damage, may even still need Helping Hands to break the substitutes uh, based on that previous damage. So yeah, very nice, very nice position for the opposing session on Jesus' side of the field at this point. Uh, you can now go for a Thunder Wave. You've got your screen set up all ready to go. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty reasonable pos position for Jesus. Hasn't done any damage yet, but didn't really need to have done so at the moment. The Zashin is sitting at minus one, facing down a Reflect as well. May not even be able to KO the Grim at this point, especially if you switch back into the opposing Incineroar. If you do that, you don't get to Thunder Wave, the, the Pokemon that could switch in, but you'd still be able to intimidate even further and maybe keep the substitutes intact uh, going into this future turn. But it makes sense to switch out the Zashin on Paul's side of the field to get rid of those attack drops. That could be taking a Thunder Wave on the switch in, though. Yeah, exactly that. It's very susceptible to that sort of play because there was nothing to stop um, that from going on. But we don't see any Thunder Waves coming out from the Grimmsnarl, actually. It may just be a raw attack here, following suit of this Zashian, going for the Behemoth Blade, dealing so much damage. Uh, guaranteeing, near guaranteeing a two-hit KO there, dependent on subsequent rolls that may be incurred in the following turns. As Moonblast from Whimsgot comes out, goes into the Grimmsnarl right now, just shy off of a two-hit KO, whilst it will have... Um, um, oh, sorry, not the Wimscott, but the double up is actually into the Kyoga there with the Spirit Break, being able to go ahead and drop its special attack. So Jesus anticipating a potential switch out there. Yeah, very nice uh, covering the, the if the Zashin stayed in, uh, it's probably not picking up, it would be really close if it's not knocking out the Grimmsnarl, it would have done with the Helping Hand boost, but if it stays in, it's taking a huge amount of damage from the Behemoth Blade as well, so yeah, yeah. covering the bases really nicely there. It doesn't need to go for the Thunder Wave if you're just reducing the special attack of the Kyogre and putting it in range of any attack you'd want to go for in the future as well, so yeah, really, really nice position for Jesus. Uh, the Kyogre's forced to protect itself here to keep itself safe, but that's still not breaking the substitutes on the, on the Zashin. And we see the Protect there, Thunder Wave trying to pin that Kyogre down, but not able to do so. And Jesus is trying to cover their bases once again, going for the Behemoth Blade into the Whimscott slot. But it is, of course, a Focus Sash. So being able to bring it down is very, very solid. Of course, it will now go down to any sort of attack there. But unfortunately, uh, it all depends on if this Whimscott can take down this Grim Snarl or not. Let's see the HP range. It doesn't look like it can. No critical hits or Although that would have been guaranteed if it was able to successfully do so. And at this point, I think Paul really is trying to safeguard uh, their restricted against any potential Thunder Waves coming out. Yeah, they really need to start relying on the, the Zapdos that's wasting in the back at this point. You can go for a Thunder Wave into the Kyogre and a Behemoth Blade, and that keeps your substitute on the Zashin. Or you could go for the Knockout onto the Whimsicott uh, with the Behemoth Blade instead. Uh, it'd probably be more beneficial to go for the Thunder Wave into the Kyogre, especially because the Tailwind is being set up. The Thunder Wave will cancel that down, and then you'll be able to just pick up the Knockout on the opposing Kyogre. So Thunder Wave is going to slow down the Kyogre. You've got to assume that there's going to be a follow-up Behemoth Blade into that Kyogre slot, because it will be a yeah. guarantee. TKO at this point and then you can just Thunder Wave whatever comes in as well uh, unless it is going to be the Zapdos but then the Zapdos would have to take a turn breaking mm. the substitute of the uh, of the Zashin and we saw how much damage the Behemoth Blade did in that first game it does over half damage to the, the Zapdos that would put it really really dangerously low so that the Dynamax uh, Palkia can take care of it in the yep. future and if you go into the Zashin the Grimmsnarl is just going to switch straight into the Incineroar so it kind of has to be the Zapdos at this point uh, you need to go for the Moonblast into the opposing uh, Grimmsnarl you can do that to be able to take care of it and then yep. take care of the, the substitute on the Zashian, but you're going to be taking so much damage from the Zapdos on the way as well. Mm -hmm. And if you KO the Grimmsnarl, that gives just the switch into the Incineral that can just KO Wimscott with a fake out as well. And 
Yeah, it's, it's still got the substitute has been very useful for Jesus with this Ashin. Uh, it's going to keep it safe from this turn. It would have been just be able to pick up the knockout uh, with the lightning uh, from the Zapdos previously if it didn't have the substitute at this range of HP. Uh, but yeah, the substitute is really, really nice here. And maybe you go for a Thunder Wave into the Whimsicott as well with the Grim Style. Kind of might as well because uh, it's going to be KO'd to the uh, Moonblast anyway. Going to dodge it anyway, but it was going to be KO'd to the Moonblast anyway. So it uh, doesn't particularly matter here in this case, but it's going to go down to the Moonblast. It will indeed, and we don't see a Dynamax from Paul's side as well, so um, quite interesting play there. Maybe just trying to preserve those um, turns of Dynamax to when actual damage can be uh, relayed onto Jesus as a Pokemon, as we did see, uh, they just wanted to go ahead and uh, destroy that substitute. So we are going to be seeing the Zacian go for the Behemoth Blade. It will actually be going for the Whimsicott, so just wanting to ensure that no further Tailwinds can be set up. It doesn't try to target down that um, Zapdos, as of course there is the threat of the static ability being procced onto it, forcing that paralysis status as well as the halving of the speed. So Paul's just going to have to try to uh, think about the strategy right now. I think the strategy is always, obviously, to go for the Dynamax with the Zapdos and try to outpace Jesus's Pokemon as much as possible, whilst keeping the Zacian in good form to try to take down this Palkia. Yeah, it's an interesting choice not to Dynamax the Zapdos. It makes sense to try and put off your Dynamax, but you take the tiniest bit of extra damage from Life Orb than you would have done if you were in Dynamax as well. And you're taking the same amount of damage from Behemoth Blades in and out of Dynamax, so uh, probably would have been more beneficial to take that slight re reduction in the Life Orb recoil from the Zapdos, because this game is almost certainly over in two turns anyway, so that extra Dynamax turn may not come into play, because the Zacian on Jesus' side of the field it can very easily just switch into the Incineroar, reduce the damage output from the Zashin, and then maybe a Play Rough and a Max Airstream will not be able to KO the Palkia because of the screens being set up still as well on Jesus' side of the field. And then you get to pick up the KO on the opposing Zashin as well. Here comes the switch out of the Zashin into the Incineroar, and now you just get to go for a Max Geyser or even a Max Quake into the opposing uh, Zashin. That should be able to pick up the Knockout, and if you try and protect it from this turn from the Max Move that can come out from the Palkia, uh, you have to either KO the Incineroar with a Max Move from your Zapdos, but that's it, leaving the Palkia completely untouched and we're in pretty much the same situation. Or you go for the Palkia and protect the Zashian and then you can just be faked out and doubled into the next turn anyway. So it's still an incredibly awkward position for Paul, even though they got the Tailwind up, even though they stalled out a turn and have all three turns available with the Zapdos, they'll have the speed advantage, but the Zapdos isn't going to be doing as much damage and the screens could be very, very crucial here because this Palkia matching the Dynamax of the Zapdos, it's going to be able to take on the attacks. It, might, it, sh it should be able to take a neutral player off and a life for max airstream because those screens that were set so early in the game the grimstone was just left alone it was just moon blasted three times that was two extra turns it went had available to just go for those screens that could come in clutch for the spalkia yeah exactly that as we are going to be seeing the zashian going for that protect it was too scared it did not want to try to go for the attack there as it was susceptible to palkia in that situation max airstream though comes out from the zapdos does absolutely knock incineroar out of the park with that max airstream will be giving it that plus one in speed as well as zashian too so at this point it is going to be outspeeding pretty much both of Jesus's Pokemon. Max Geyser, who is it targeting? It goes for the Zacian, so Paul making the correct decision for going for the Protect there does not want to risk that scenario as the rain has now faded. And this does mean, of course, that Max Flare is once again super viable as there is no weather on play in the battlefield. And uh, it just comes down to whether the Zacian is uh, scared of the Max Flare or not. Yeah, it, it had to be that play from Paul. Paul absolutely made the correct play. Uh, catching the Incineroar on the switch and not being KO'd uh, with the Zacian as a protect an airstream into the Zacian slot was definitely the correct play to make. Uh, you've got to wonder if the Zacian on Jesus' side of the field is going to opt for a protect this turn. Uh, if it does and any attack goes into the Zacian, that allows Palkia to absolutely survive the turn and KO the opposing Zacian. Uh, but if you just go on the offensive with, a, with the Zacian on Jesus' side of the field, expecting the Palkia to be doubled up, uh, then you'll be able to KO the Zashian on Paul's side of the field and 
or do huge amounts of damage to the Zapdos instead. So uh, it's going to be quite a close finish. Uh, Paul, if he didn't make the Airstream into the Zacian play, uh, would have almost certainly gone to Jesus at this point. Now it's a bit more awkward on whether the Zacian on Jesus' side of the field attacks or not, because the Palkia, if it gets a Quake into the opposing uh, Zacian, it should be able to take on both the Pokemon. Oh. The Zacian did not protect it, and the player is not doing much damage at all. No, it really isn't. It gets an attack drop, but that is neg negligible. That makes uh, no difference. Max Airstream, double up into the Palkia. Jesus has not protected anything, which means that it is their turn to go on the offensive, even though Zapdos and uh, Zacian on Paul's side have all of the speed and momentum. Behemoth Blade is coming out from Jesus's Zacian, who is the targeting. It's going into the Zapdos, of course, and this may, ladies and gents, be a double up from the Palkia straight into there but no it's not it's the max quake it goes into paul zashian and it picks up the ko and jamie this is looking to be a triumphant potential win from jesus if they're able to go ahead and pick up this zapdos in the following turns yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good for Jesus right now, I would say. Uh, even though the Palkia and the uh, Zap, uh, Zashin are uh, pretty low at this point, uh, the Palkia is almost certainly not in a max move range. And if you just go for Airstream into the Palkia, Behemoth Blade is absolute KO, and the Zapdos is low enough that the Palkia will be able to KO. Uh, you just need to attack with both Pokemon at this point with Jesus. Uh, you can go for Behemoth Blade and the Max Geyser. That is picking up the knockout, depending on uh, even if the Zapdos would even pick up the knockout on the Palkia. Go for Max Guard at this point, uh, uh, maybe going for a hurricane confusion uh go going for the dodges of the palkia makes sense as well if you can take care of the, the zashian you now have the shaky accuracy of hydro pump so uh, definitely the correct play to go for max guard with the zapdos so paul is absolutely making all the plays he can make to keep himself in this game it is yep. looking heavily in jesus's favor at, at this point uh, you need to knock out the zashian with a uh, either heat wave or a thunderbolt and dodge a spatial rend but spatial rend is very accurate for an inaccurate move like 95 accuracy is pretty good heat wave does connect with the zashian and now you just need to oh not even that is going to be the game oh no i think paul had to be hoping for some sort of crit or double crits there and then a miss from palkia but guess what ladies and gents we have your champion jesus jimenez is the victor of this final two and O oh versus previously reigning world champion paul ruiz Wow, what a final. Yeah, and what a way to do it. Beat a former world champion to secure your title in the Series 12 Challenge. Absolutely fantastic play coming out uh, from both players as well. Paul was absolutely playing uh, very well in that end game as well, but Jesus was just able to pick it out. And yeah, that's, I'm, I'm glad we got to replay because that was a great set as well. Uh, the game one was fantastic. We got to see the game too. So yes. yeah, very, very, very good play from both players. And it seems that Zashian and Palkia are the restricted duo that's come out on top in this first tournament. Yeah, I mean, I don't think a lot of people would have expected Palkia to be able to essentially go ahead and win such a major tournament. Let's not forget, everybody, it was nearly 550 players globally that joined this tournament. Nine rounds of Swiss, followed up by today's top cut, where it essentially started from a top 41 stage, going straight down to this moment, the finals, where Jesus is crowned the champion, and they do get a very handsome a uh, prize pool um, uh, money. I think, I'm not sure what the amount is, but it's very, very generous indeed. Thanks to GG Tools um, providing uh, that support as well in uh, working with partnership of Victory Road. Yeah, and uh, I, I am quite surprised not to see the Frothon come out from Paul's side of the field, given the fact that it was facing a fighting less, uh, fighting move less Zashian. Yes. That seemed to be the exact matchup that it was designed for. I know it doesn't have yep. Leech Seed and it does have Power Up instead, but if you just get an Iron Defense, you are pretty much sorted. So I was quite surprised not to see that be brought to either of the games for Paul's side of the field, yep. uh, opting for the uh, Whimsicott and the Zapdos instead, and not quite enough to be able to break through the, the Zashin and the Palkia. So mm -hmm. uh, unfortunate not to see that, but... That is, that is uh, the strategy that was opted for, unfortunately. And yep. Zashin and Palka were able to come out on top there. Yep, exactly that. And uh, I do have confirmation on the prize money, uh, which has uh, been distributed amongst the top eight of the tournament. We see uh, Jesus going ahead and getting the handsome amount of 200 US dollars. Paul, runner up with 100 US dollars. 
third, fourth places, uh, 50, and fifth to eighth places, 25. And ladies and gents, don't forget, this was a free entry tournament, one of the biggest ones we've had for a very long time. We see the hype for Series 12 is here, is now. So please give your support to both Victory Road and GG Tour. Um, the Victory Road for being able to host the stream as well as the tournament. Huge props to them, to everybody, to Mr. Bloody Jamie Boyd for joining me as well. Hey, I love him. I, I can't, we can't on stream and all that, but he, he, he knows, he knows. But anyways, um, point is, uh, you've all made this a very enjoyable day. Uh, personally, I feel very happy and I'm very, you know, happy, of course, for Jesus. So huge congratulations, I mean, to him as well, in all honesty. Yeah, it's one of the biggest online tournaments that we've had, uh, especially for a, a new format as well, for these many people to, to come out and play in this tournament has been fantastic. And to come out on top in that tournament of over 500 players is yes. no small accomplishment at all. Uh, so a fantastic showing from, uh, from Jesus there and should be very, very pleased with themselves for taking that title. Yeah, exactly that. And I believe, ladies and gents, that is going to be us for the day. Thank you once again for joining us. I don't think we have a winner's interview from what I'm being told. So if there is, no, there isn't. Yeah, confirmed. So um, we will be leaving you here. We're hoping you, uh, we're wishing you a very lovely start to the week uh, for next week from tomorrow onwards. And please stay safe. Um, be careful of yourselves. Um, you know, it, just try to make sure that you're safe for yourselves, but also for everyone around you. I'm only just recovering from a flu. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure I'm distancing myself from everyone. So please stay safe. Looking forward to the next event. So don't go anywhere. Follow Victory Road on Twitter and all social media that they have. And we'll be catching you next time. Take care.